Isis. You think uh, your flights are comfortable? I say we think, we think our flights are uncomfortable. This is for the nerds, this is for the brainiacs, this is what we deserve Go ahead and play it back, you ain't gonna touch me You're oh. not gonna do uh. nothing, you are not above me I bet you wish you was me, I know that I know What? What is poppin' everybody? <laughs> and welcome back to another special. special episode of the Only Friends Podcast. Well, you know, it's me and my only friend, which includes, but is not limited to, my boy, Tort 2! What's poppin', Tort 2? What's poppin'? I got it, I got it, got, I got it. There we go, there we go. Yeah, you, you got well, your shot? We are, we are all things sulfur wide today. Hey, wow, look at this. Look at you're fucking bright. Yeah, you are Ooh, bright, Jesus. Jesus. You're huh. glowing. Look at that exposure. I've, I've come down from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so white? Oh, uh, I don't know, because I was... Look uh, how fucking happy he is. <laughs> I didn't even do a shot. He's so happy. Imagine he if I would have did one. Happy. He turned me down on a shot. Oh, no, Rob, don't fix the light. Just just fix it on your side, bro. It's. Yeah. I don't think just there's anything the you can do now. on the light, man. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh, it's not the for light. some reason, this light was, like, off. Uh, and I just turned it on. I didn't know. <laughs> you guys see Pip? 
Do you want? Do you Pippi. want to see? Oh, she's Pippi's here. Yeah. She's taking a nap. She's a little nappy girl. You got to move that book. I call Melissa, her... move the book. There she. Oh, look oh, at that. No, you're girl. good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Look yeah. I'm not really sure why that book is there. It now that was a gift, Melissa. But you can't even see the dog. book. It just That's looks the like point. a It's part obstacle. of Destin. Is this the pup? The pup cast? This is our new pup. Oh, Pippa Pig. Our, our, our pod pup. She's such a good girl. She's so cute. She's going to be a lap dog for the next four weeks. She's going to be a lap dog when she's full grown. Oh, I know, too. but she's going to be so fucking big. And then she's, she's going to so be cute. twice the size of you. Uh, I don't think that big. We were debating it last night. I think she's going to get to... paws aren't that big. They're not small, though. They're, they're not, not small but they're at not all. Like, like, if you look from the back of They're not paws, like, oh my god, like... Yeah, the thing is, is that, like... Up, the thing is, it's not just about her paw. Like, her whole leg is already pretty beefy. She's got long legs. Yeah. She looks like she's going to be a big girl. I think she's going to be around Gatsby's size. My yeah. sister thinks she's going to be, like, 30 pounds heavier, but my sister doesn't know shit about shit. I think she'll be a little bit bigger than Gatsby. I mean, you guys have How no idea what Gatsby you're talking is? about. Huh? You thought- How big do you think Gatsby is? What do you mean, like, weight-wise? Yeah. 80 pounds? Wow, really? He's less than that? Yeah, a lot less than that. Didn't you guys think <laughs> Scott was going to be bigger than Gatsby? 75 pounds. Yeah, but we also thought Scott was a pit bull. Only She's to find chihuahua. out later that she was a chihuahua. What, 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 what do we, got? Yeah, we don't know. We don't know, do we know what this is. Pip is half rot, half pit. But we haven't tested. We haven't tested. She might be more rot than pit or more pit than Ruby. rot. You One might thing be part I, like yeah. coyote or something. One part, thing I can guarantee idiot. you Pip is not, and that's a chihuahua. Yeah, she's not a chihuahua. Uh, she's, she's like not, looks like a little hippo. A chihuahua in that one. <laughs> she uh, she very quickly took the number two spot away from Scouty. I hope Corey's not listening. But, uh, no, so Corey will be a happy. Good girl. That's his dog. No, yeah, no, she's still my dog. She's not she's, your dog. She's not. She's not your dog. She hasn't been in your room when Corey's home for I don't know. Well, three, four, five years. That's because Corey is home an awful lot and I'm not, you know, I appreciate Corey. He, he does the Lord's work. He gives Scout all the attention she needs and she's a clingy, clingy animal. Have you guys ever heard cope like this before? Sir Copium? <laughs> Mr. Gatsby sometimes wanders his way up the steps too. You he, know, he does love it again. up there. He's a couch It's, boy it's fucking warm up there. That's part. Of, that's the other part of the uh, the luring the dogs up. I walked up there today. I got to the landing. I'm like, God, I know. Damn. Sometimes it's like 83. I'm sweating. What is going on? And my sister's like, I don't know. The room's kind of cold. <laughs> I was a little like cold. cold. What is, it? is there only a heater in the hallway? What's the going hallway on? The hallway doesn't here? have vents. I think. Whew. It's a fucking sauna up there. Yeah. I tell you. But yeah. Matt, but your sister's R-A-C older or younger? She's a year and a half younger. But uh, much, much wiser in spirit. You can just uh. ask her. She'll tell you. <laughs> it's been wonderful having her. I appreciate everything she's done for me. It's great. She brought Pip. She did bring Pip. Thank God. I was supposed to go pick her up after the WPT cruise. But um, my sister was like, well... She needs to be able to fit into this carry-on case in order to fly with her. Otherwise, you have to put her in the, you know, underbelly of the plane, which I would never do that to an animal. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, like, you know, she's a puppy. How big of a deal could it be? Like, she, it's only three weeks from now. She's pretty small. Like, she probably would have been okay. She, she showed me her in the crate or in the, in the carry-on or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, we have like three days. Oh, that was like <laughs> max size. Yeah, she was just like maxing out already. She's already bigger than Charlie. Yeah, 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 you understand. Not quite as big as Ollie yet, though. Right. Well, but give it. We give, give it a week. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah. got into. By Gats- the time that you would have needed to uh, to bring her back, I should be bigger than Ollie. And Ollie fits in. The, we've taken him on a plane. He he fits in the uh, the little carry on, but um, not by much. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a solid chance that she'll be like 20 pounds within mm-hmm. a couple of weeks. Especially if she fucking got into Gatsby's food today, just housed it. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't chew, just just straight ant eater. (laughs) No, we don't. (laughs) She's got to pack on the pounds. Lean dog. We want a lean animal. She's supposed to be fat. Yeah, but it's it's more about big puppy belly. I'm I'm worried about longevity. You know, I I feel like Rottweilers are always fat. They're thick. They're thick. They're they're always like they're athletic dogs. I got to figure out. So I'm I'm already planning ahead now. You know, it's like okay, she's ten weeks. I need to figure out how to get the most out of her joints over the dura- I don't want I don't want her to suffer the fate of Gatsby. Oh, mm. the poor boy. But like, you know, she's going to want that ball. <laughs> she was she's already with it. Yeah, yeah, she's already she's a ball girl. It's Maybe funny you her, her raw. Maybe. Her and Scout were like fighting over the ball. 
the dog that lived the longest mm. like the 31 year old dog or whatever it, it wasn't even a small dog either but it lived really long because they fed it only like chicken and rice really? its whole life i'm i'm here for, i'll do it i'll do it i'll just give them what i eat yeah you can just make it with no salt yeah yeah crush it mm-hmm. all right what do you think pip you want that chicken and rice diet Some we can cool. get you we, we're gonna get you on the bodybuilding diet let's yeah. go baby <laughs> get you ripping some shit uh trt <laughs> get pip on well, that's that's for gatsby i, yeah. I no gatsby joke needs it you guys are joking i text my doctor and i go uh out of curiosity you know we we neuter these dogs at a young age like would it help the health of my dog if i put him on testosterone <laughs> What would happen? I don't know. Should He's like, I don't, I don't want to experiment with my dog. <laughs> no. I, I mean, mean <laughs> he's getting to that, you know, yeah. age. He's right? only 12. Look, it can't hurt. Only he's sure. Big, yeah, I'm but he's sure a big dog, though. Yeah. That's, like, pretty old for a big dog. Yeah. I'm sure there's a, there are uh, owners that have done that before. I gave him a cortisone shot, and, man, he was a puppy for, like, two weeks. Wow. <laughs> and then when it wore off, he was a mm-hmm. cripple. He likes that Aww. CBD, though. He loves the Maybe CBD. Maybe we should give him some, like, weed. Well, no, weed's toxic for dogs. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when Oscar ate... Phil's oh, stash. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, our Poor friend Phil guy. Collins, uh, his dog, he had a little little Toto dog, like the Wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. Got into a stash of weed and they had to take it to the emergency vet <laughs> to get his stomach pumped. Oh, no. <laughs> Brutal. You hate to see it. Yeah. This one ate a fucking bag of mixed nuts first day she was home. Oh, good girl. No, not good girl. It's toxic. <laughs> it's good girl. It's fucking, yeah. Well, what's toxic about it? Uh, that, that's got to be a weird conversation to have with your vet. Right, because you're like uh, self-reporting, like, "Hey, oh, man, the weed. It's fine. <laughs> it happens a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and they just well, it Phil out was usually. too Phil was too high to take the dog, so his wife had to take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like my sister said, that she ate a whole bag of mixed nuts, got scared, she gave her peroxide to induce vomiting, and it was oh fine. My God. I know. Smart thinking. I mean, Rudy's eating everything. Your dog is a dumpster. He That's never true. has gotten sick. Like he ate a whole ketchup packet and threw it up whole. Unopened. <laughs> I think he ate it. Yeah, and he ate it. And you and made a freaking thing of like pulled pork that was like four Mother pounds. Motherfucker. It was like four or five pounds. He ate like a quarter pork, of a right? fucking yeah. brisket. He yeah. ate the whole thing and he was just laying there with his belly huge and he's just like, uh, I'm like, glad he, he enjoyed loved it. it. Yeah. I'm not. He Mother doesn't fuck- get sick though, like ever. It's so weird. I'm Motherfucker eats fun. everything. He ate two and a half everything. crumble cookies the other day. Yeah. Yeah. More why, than that. Why did you keep uh, the, more the than meat that. within the dog's it reach? Was no, you it's owner. not. Listen, let me tell he you something right now. He stands on the counter. No, let me tell you Obviously something Obviously it was in his reach. It was, yeah. It's Otherwise, not. I don't know it. what the fuck Everything this dog is in his does. Reach. <laughs> he, he's very crafty. He can get on services. Listen, I brought some food home from Palms one day, like barbecue stuff, and I put like I put it. I know Rudy's there, so I don't put it within fucking, you know, this it's far out, from the counter, get it. like from the edge of the counter. Somehow, some way, this motherfucker <laughs> jumped up there. I guess he was like sitting on top of the stool. Like it's the only thing that makes sense. I think sense he gets to on me. the stool and then gets on the counter and then jumps off with it, it's, and then he takes it up to my room and opens it up there. The only thing that makes sense to me, but all I know is this motherfucker ate like fucking seven he pork ribs. <laughs> this is the same dog that eats rocks, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. He doesn't eat them; he collects them. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like really particular. Like he'll pick one up and then he'll like drop it and then he'll pick it up and then like finally he grabs one. He's legit a real life crackhead. He is, yeah. Like, He's from Harlem. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> sure. <laughs> streets He's of Harlem. Harlem. Yeah, he's from the streets. Oh my god, man, these puppy farts are fucking. She, she fire. has like straight she egg farts. It's worse. It's so much worse. Today it, I was like, it, it smells oh, like, like kid farted. And Landon's like, are you blaming it on her? <laughs> <laughs> no, like nice. she farted or you farted or someone did. Good job, Landon. Don't let her fucking skate on this shit. I admit when I fart. Do you though? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I don't want to get into this. <laughs> 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 Whether you do or don't. Well, let's move on. Congratulations. Congratulations to uh, actually, let's. Uh, do you have the asset for the for the MMA fighter guap? I do. Okay, let's let's do a who's. I have, co- uh, I have two of them actually, but yeah. But the same same thing. Oh, okay. Uh, let's do a who's cooking. Ooh, who's cooking? Sorry, Sorry I, mean, I didn't mean. That, yeah, I know. I got you for this one. Do you, do you have do you have the who's cooking? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I should have should have walked you through this one first. My bad. We'll get there. So what you do when you're in the kitchen is you get out the pans, 
Right, you chop stuff up, and then eventually... <laughs> Brian's cooking. How to cook. <laughs> How to cook. Cook, man. Uh, cook. I just gotta be cooking. Ready or not, kill, I, come. Jumped out with my soul leaking. Going hard till I'm so eating. No chatting and no speaking. No deafening with slow breathing. Damn, homie, you the man, homie. They can't do it, but you can, homie. They can't do it. All right, we have a couple people cooking this week, according to Poker Twitter. Well, according to Twitter in general, let's start with Poker Twitter. First of all, one Miss L- Nikki Limo, <clears throat> yep. oh, yeah. executive producer of this show. She played the bounty tournament, <sighs> mystery bounty tournament at Resorts World. And it looks as though she was lucky enough to get one of the big bounties. Mm-hmm. There are two 10K bounties and I believe three 5K bounties. Let's see what happens. Game What's bounty. the biggest bounty? 10? 10K. Down the middle. Just down the middle. Just down okay. the middle. Okay. Right. Open it up. Okay. Open it up. Okay. Don't touch them. Okay. Don't they have a little label? Slow. 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 Oh, $5,000. Yeah. 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 Yes. Thank you. I was watching her story and my heart was racing. That's awesome. <laughs> I was like, what a thrill. I mean, what was the buy in for this tournament? 400 bucks. 400 bucks? Yeah. Oh, and a 5K bounty is pretty yeah. good. Just 12 buy ins right there. Good. Good. Once you good. get to that third zero, let me tell you something. Yeah, heart, you pulled the 25K. Heart starts beating. You're like, oh, give me something. I just like watching. Like the other night, we were watching the Triton mystery bounty, and I was just sweating the bounty pulls. They were having mm-hmm. like their girlfriends pull for them. That was kind of fun. <laughs> I need to know, did any of the girlfriends pull a big bounty or are they bad luck? Yeah. Um, oh, Ch- I think Chidwick's wife pulled the 200K. Wow. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's the one. That was the smallest gonna, bounty. Let's go on a small tangent. <laughs> what do you guys 40K. think about Chidwick's, um, he's got like this big handlebar mustache thing he's growing out. Have you guys oh, seen yeah? this? I have not. I haven't, Very I, different. I've seen it, but I haven't really noticed. Oh yeah. He's definitely rocking a big So he's stash. He's cooking. I think that's cool. For him. Yeah, good mm-hmm. for him. Yeah. I think it's good. I mean, he's married, so it doesn't Should I do matter. that? You just try shit, you know? Yeah, yeah when you're you married, you, you just do whatever you want. I don't know how people have mu- these long mustaches. These mustaches are fucking annoying. This is a pain in the ass. You just have hair all over your lips and stuff. Yeah. Like, mine's, like, not even that long, but My it feels really way too into long. My brother the beard community for no, a little bit, no, and no. he was doing, like, beard podcasts and stuff. <laughs> like, he, like, cause he doesn't, like... Go, he doesn't just like casually pick up a hobby. Like if he, he just like goes all in. And so he's like going on beard podcasts and he had to wear like use straws every time he drank because he was like, you know, a beard, I don't like, know mustache. your brother at all, but for whatever reason in my head, he has a striking resemblance to JMO. He looks like me. No, I don't even mean like looks. I just feel like every time you talk about him, I envision because I don't know him and I've never seen him. Uh-huh. J-Mo is just like in my brain. No, he's like covered in tattoos mm. and looks like me, but he has facial hair. Right. That he and needs he has hand tattoos straws to, and, to drink. Like, water <laughs> yeah, but he got rid of he. I think so he he's just, cooking. Good for him. <laughs> the beard community is like real, shout out to the beard community. That was the <laughs> the the bounty you're talking about. That was the one Dan Smith won. The I think so. 50K? Yeah. The, yeah. Oh, the 40k. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Dan Smith. But He's their also cooking. Are flat, like yeah, that was a flat bounty, I think. Oh, oh that was you're right. You're right. Bounty. Not the mystery bounty. Right. Shout out to Poker Dan back out there. Retired pickleball Dan back to mm, Poke Triton yeah. Dan. Does it seem like the pickleball fat is phasing no. it? No. No, not at I, all. You haven't played in months. It's been very cold. It snowed today. So cold. Where? Here. What? It snowed. Really? When I was, when I was, a few nice days. Yeah, when I was driving to the... Yeah, I played pickleball two days ago. Oh. Still not walking right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I was driving to the Bellagio, it, was, it wasn't sticking. It was like, you know, hitting the windshield like rain, but you could see it in the air. It was flaring. Wild. Yeah. Wow, that was in Michigan, and like it was fucking beautiful outside. Just you... made me ready to go fucking snowboard. I haven't no. gone yet this year. You have no friends to go snowboard. I know, with. you guys all suck. 
Man, do you guys? So you guys I, are not cooking. But it's expensive, like two hundred dollars. I for keep a telling day? you, I have buddy passes. It's basically free. Yeah, he did say oh. that. I have ten buddy passes. I thought True. I had to pay two hundred. No buddies, though. No buddies. <laughs> I can't fucking give them away. I thought I had to pay two hundred dollars to even just go for. I mean, like two you'll hours. need equipment and stuff, so it's not going to be free. But you know, well, it'll I have be cheap. A, I got all this that. Seems like a scam. I got all that, but now I have a, a vest. I have a fear of fear of a ski lift. <laughs> so crazy God. i don't know maybe i might be able to go i might be able to hit the ski lift again. rich conrad was the fucking worst man why he, he immediately just bought like a full set of skis <laughs> like all kind went one goddamn time and like not only did he only go once but we were we were in we were in park city for three straight days he was there with his girlfriend who it was the first time we had even met her we didn't even know if she was real and he literally goes up and down once goes the second time he's like nah this ain't for me man <laughs> and just leaves his helmet never to be seen again we he's fucking takes his skis and he's skiing down our our driveway <laughs> literally on the street oh literally just on the street oh, like yeah, cross, cross country cross country first off i did that before everything me and jenna got there a few days earlier and then the ski slope was closed and i wanted to go and i couldn't so i was like okay i'm just gonna go down the street right so that's what i did that's when i did that mm -hmm. and then for some reason i got stuck on the fucking ski lift for like 20 maybe 30 minutes and i haven't been the fucking same since i can't go up escalators i get fucking <laughs> nauseous in an elevator what are you scared of they're gonna get it moving at some point just relax listen enjoy relax. The view. i have never been scared of heights or anything i've gone skydiving multiple times like i, I love all this stuff we should really get that house at park city again it that, was that, that house was, was awesome. so sick that was the great that, okay yeah. well if you guys would okay. fucking go do snow stuff i would well, I'll be very go if i don't have to pay um Hundred bucks to oh my god! I enter the premises. The, this house is sick, but it's really expensive. It's probably like ten k a night. Yeah, it was. It was it's yeah, no, full, people full, though. That thing. You yeah, put you, 20 you can house twenty people easy. Yeah, uh, it had like a full basketball court in it. The house was sick. It, was it had a basketball dope. court inside. Inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah like you go like yeah. down like in the. When like, was the this? Yeah. Uh, uh, December of twenty two. Yeah. Right before the new year, uh, I avoided a crypto oh, I rug. Uh, I, I avoided getting scammed by going to this trip. That's right. It was great. That's good. How? Yeah. There was a there was a crypto game in Panama. Oh yeah. Or Puerto Rico. Puerto rather, Rico. Yeah. Puerto Rico. <laughs> and the, I get a text the next day that says one of the guys running it left a suicide note saying that uh, he had ran off with all the crypto, gave it in to great. his parents, it's and then insane. killed himself. Well, obviously, like he didn't really kill himself. He just disappeared into the middle of did you ever, nowhere. Did you ever get a follow up on this? Uh, many, many, many follow ups. For whatever That's reason, crazy. the people who like got fucked over don't want to like go public with it like I, I think for a lot of them it was just not enough skin uh for them to be like super upset yeah um but it was yeah. a lot of fucking skin yeah <laughs> it was a lot of skin it was a seven figure rug probably a lot more now i mean crypto or bitcoin was like maybe 25k at the low, time i think yeah yeah, 22. yeah. now it's more seven. it's a little bit more <laughs> old uh pain Old Suicide Boy's doing pretty fucking well in the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. Um, all right. Also cooking. Uh, Guapo, do you, are you familiar with this man? Yeah, he was a fighter from back in the day. Okay, he, he was, was a former UFC, UFC champion. Vets, yeah. yeah. Uh, apparently, his elderly parents, he was staying with them. House caught on fire. His dog, um, Hammer, also a Rottweiler, alerted him that the house was on fire he woke up the house was already in a blaze he uh how do you not wake up i don't know I, I i hear this a lot about houses just like being really? you know on fire or whatnot and people well i think it smells strong yeah but i think uh, yeah yeah it's weird because it's like the early detection you would think that you would you Maybe would notice it oxygen but i was gonna say like if you don't pick up the early detection then you start to smother and you just probably fade away you know yeah but uh, apparently he got himself out, realized that his parents were still inside, doubled back, and he said like by the time he had got himself out, the house was like really fucked. Doubled back, somehow got his elderly parents out of the house, went back in a third time and passed out due to the lack of oxygen. Mm -hmm. uh, so he had to then get rescued and dragged out or whatever. Uh, he was attempting to rescue his poor dog who oh. unfortunately didn't no! make it. Oh, I don't like this story. He really, the story did not make it, but... Well, what the, the humans survived, so that's a good thing. No, I, it's not important to me. <laughs> R.I.P. to Hammer. R.I.P. to Hammer. He's a true champion. Why do you stay in the house? Though? 
the dog. Well, you know, I the, I don't have answers to these fire <laughs> things. Like, <laughs> what the hell is this? This is him. I'm scared. I swear to God, I'm so lucky. This was him after the. Uh, I can't believe my parents He's like in the ICU. Are mine. I had to make the decision was because I got out of my room and went to the door and it was already horrible. I couldn't breathe. I almost had to go outside. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god, okay. Oh. I got him, but I couldn't it's find okay. him. <laughs> Man. Okay, well, that's depressing. So, <laughs> thanks for that. Bro, oh, oh, fuck. Way to set Jeez. the mood, Matt. Love Bro, the guy just great. rescued two fucking humans. Let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's acknowledge what the man has done. Uh, quite honestly, the human. I can't believe you put this in there. The I wouldn't know how long. I wouldn't know Come how long. On, Come on, man. man. <laughs> that that was, guys. Was, <laughs> guys, guys, I need to know how old Hammer is because there are some logistic decisions that need to be made here. This is an older gentleman, it looks like. His parents are, you know, maybe 90-something. I don't something. know where you're going with this, but so, stop. The parents <laughs> yeah. are probably like 90-something. If Hammer's like six or seven, come on, man. You go get Hammer, and the parents just got to well, go. Get, get everybody. Round him up. I, I mean, it sounds like he was flying blind here. It doesn't sound like uh, he had a lot of time to react. So... You know, congrats to the man right. for for d being a fucking hero. It's it's hard to do anything other than save your own life in those situations. Yeah. It's kind of weird that the dog's instincts don't kick in and just want to just get out get the out. door. Well, he well, might just want to get everybody else maybe out. Maybe he passed oh, out. Or... I see. Or, yeah. Would you go for the dogs or your roommates first? You would go for the dogs. dogs. <laughs> well, unfortunately for Melissa and Corey, they're upstairs. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll already we'll just, be we out. Can get, yeah. We can scale the balcony. <laughs> yeah, that's can true. They, they have an escape hatch. Yeah, I'll balcony. already be out. With I should actually puppy. say, unfortunate for Landon and Conrad, none of the dogs would be with them. We should actually probably get a fire ladder for the balcony. That's <laughs> barely two stories. You'll be fine. Yeah, I we'll mean, catch you. Just, it's not just ideal, roll. Though. Once you hit like, the ground, you just roll. My You're ankles good. will probably break. <laughs> nah, we'll catch you. Okay. It's not It's not that high. You'll be fine. Thank you. Yeah, you can climb Thanks, down the guys. side. Don't worry, we're not gonna have a fire. The fucking entire house lights I mean, up like a Christmas tree if somebody even starts fire, cooking bacon. Fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, I know, but I always hear it goes starts going, and then I go, I hear Berkey downstairs go, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> fire, fire, damn it! <laughs> you don't need a, a a fire escape. All you need is a trampoline. True. Yeah. Mm. No. True. In it's true. the uh, driveway. Yeah. yeah. Might pop you right back up onto the top. <laughs> <laughs> launches me into the plane. Right back in there. Like, the hell? Oh, you can just use Landon's fucking car as a as a catch. Yeah. You know, uh, it's oh, not true. doing anything else. Up in the sunroof. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just sitting there collecting dust anyway. That poor car. All right. The last person who's cooking this week is my man Barney Boatman. Big shout out to him. He went out to uh where they was it Paris or France rather? What? Europe. The, EPT. Well, yeah, it was Europe. The <laughs> yeah. last EPT. Was I think it was it? Paris. Pa Paris, that's what I thought. Uh, Poker Stars just announced that he's going to be the latest team pro. Wow. Big, big stride. I mean, cool. this is kind of cool, actually, because Barney's not exactly one to bite his tongue. Uh, I would think he's somebody who is willing to uh, stand up for what he believes is right uh, and making sure that, you know, his name is not besmirched in the the process of becoming a an ambassador. So I think this is a really good hire by Poker Stars. I think the fact that he just won an EPT makes him super relevant, which is nice. Uh, and hopefully, you know, he has some input as far as being a liaison between the players and the the operators. Though I will say, for what it's worth, over the last couple of years, all the things that have come out in uh, the online poker sphere, Stars has managed to keep himself pretty above the fray. Yeah. Hasn't been a lot of. Uh, stars flack getting thrown around it's kind of shocking right like it wasn't that long ago that we were like ah oh, stars has punted on poker since the amaya group sold they don't they don't really mm -hmm. care it's just kind of a thing that still exists you know but here they are but is that still it's kind of the same feeling though i don't know because i think like from a security standpoint i think that everybody kind of agrees they're setting the standard yeah for sure but from a call it action standpoint i guess Maybe they're not getting the same traffic that they once did. I mean, they lost the the market share to GG. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of that has has probably has to do with tighter KYCs. Yeah. A lot. Difficult to get a ton of money on there. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. it looks like the live stuff is popping. It every, does seem every, like they're investing a lot more in live. E, all their EPT stops have been absurd recently in the last year, maybe two years. Um, that you it, know, 
within the next six months, we may see upwards of three, if not more, live streams here in Vegas. Oh, really? um, Poker Go Studio, Venetian launches this summer, and then Bally's is moving to a new home. Venetian is Venetian is doing what? A live stream? They're launching a live stream. Like oh. just the regular cash game players? I don't know. I don't know what the plan is. I just know that with the opening of the new room, they plan to have a live stream. That's and I know that um, I think that there were other people lobbying to like just partner with them for a live stream, and they said, nope, we're doing it in-house. Oh, wow. wow. This is going to be our thing. I remember Bellagio was doing something for a little Bellagio while. Bellagio Pots did, yeah. not, did not go well. It had a, it yeah, had a chance, it could have done well. Yeah. It was, I think it was too soon. At that time, the only thing that really existed was Live at the Bike, maybe Stones, and uh, Bellagio Pots. I'm pretty sure they even predated Poker Go. I think by like maybe a year. I want to say Pots was like 2016. Poker Go launched in 2017. It was Pots was definitely before I got to Vegas, so it was definitely like sixteen. Yeah, well, it, it very well could have been seventeen. I only say that because uh, the mainstays of the game were like a very young Brad Owen and Nimi. Nimi, yeah. yeah. And I can't. I feel like I was vlogging at the time, but I also vlogged like halfway through seventeen. So it could have been either one of those years. But I'm pretty sure it predated Poker Go. Mm-hmm. Um, just a little bit ahead of its time, I think it. They didn't really have... Uh, the... I don't think they had whole cams. No, they did. Did they? Yeah, but they didn't really have the structure necessary to keep the games running. Like, I don't think that they had a dedicated game runner the way like Brent does for uh, Poker Go or the way Wayne does for Live at Bally's um, or Ryan at, at Hustler. I think that they just kind of left that up to you know, whoever's running 510 that day, um, which then you just get a bunch of regs that are willing to play. And it, it was never bigger than 510. It's like, it, it's a novel idea, but it was a better idea when Live at the Bike did it in the early 2000s when seeing any cash games on TV was fucking amazing. Or on the internet, I should say. Um, so yeah, maybe a little ahead of its time, but here we are, circling back. It's going to be two streams in LA, at least, uh, between Commerce Live and Hustler. Uh, definitely two streams minimum in Vegas between Venetian and Poker Go, but then there's also going to be Bally's moving to a new home to be determined. And we got 14 in Texas. And then there's also, uh, <laughs> there's also Oklahoma. Poker Night in America. Okay. But I don't know what their deal Everyone's is. They, they shouldn't have be running like, I don't know, once a month. I don't think they're doing anything live though, are they? Um, I saw them just post something about a PLO game with like for a little, Jay Carver. They did for a little, like... They no, did a vlogger somewhere, game. But then they stopped. They did a vlogger game last weekend, I think, live. Was it live? I think so. I want to say it was. I saw the one with Jay Nandez, Jay Carver, a bunch of others that were playing PLO, but okay. I just saw a clip, so I assumed it was just... Yeah, I want to say that these things are live, because mm. I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure the... The fact we don't know is not a good sign. Yeah, the, <laughs> I'm pretty sure the vlogger game was live. Yeah. Us not knowing, not great. Not yeah. great for viewership. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we're, we're paying attention. Stream's a bit saturated, but... Yeah. It's so hard to keep up with all the streams. There's like a million of them. I just stopped watching all of them because you kind of want to watch like what everybody's watching. But right. now it's like there's like a hundred streams and like I feel like nobody's watching. So I kind of realized I'm the complete opposite. So the only two streams that I've enjoyed watching, well, for the most part enjoyed, was the one from Bally's, which was uh, the these nuts kids. I don't know. The Absolute poker nuts. nuts. Absolute yeah. nuts. Yes. So you should get in that game. I probably should. I feel like that's your type of thing. That would be my game for sure. That's why I enjoyed watching it. It was just fun. Like, it was mm. just absolute bonkerness. Um, but the other one is actually, um, I was watching a Texas live stream that was live streamed on Twitter, actually. Mm. And it was just like, made me think, is there any reason why we should, like, if, to do the podcast on Twitter? We could do it on Twitter. Yeah, like just the run a live stream as, like simultaneously, like just hit the other button. Yeah, I, I, we should look into that because it would probably be smart from my account. Yeah, good. I I, I mean, I'm sure the crossover between people who subscribe to Software Why, um, YouTube, and my followers on Twitter is probably pretty close to one to one. But you know, any overlap we there. Have an only- no, I know, but it only has four thousand, mm-hmm. uh, four thousand followers right uh, now, and I'm positive that those four thousand followers also <laughs> subscribe <laughs> to the channel. Yeah. Right, uh, very good point. Yeah, 
but yeah, I feel like maybe there's a chance we can get a wider audience. I saw Liv Bree doing this with her podcast. Okay. I didn't know she had one. Yeah, she would post. The thing is, it's not live, but maybe there's something we can tinker with when we're in the Cayman mm -hmm. uh, on the WPT cruise. We okay. can maybe upload to both. Cruise pod. We can also cruise upload pod. video to Spotify. I don't know if you knew that, Lamana. I didn't know that. I um, think for our 500th episode, um, we should try to yeah. do that cash game we talked about, or we just do yeah. a podcast and play cash at the yeah. same time. Yeah. I. Cash I like game, the idea. Cash game. Executable, yeah. Uh, that's, that's yeah the tough it's, part. it's uh it's a lot better I mean, of an we don't idea. Need to worry about security if it's just us. Like um, we're not gonna cheat each other. I'm oh, not no, sweating. I'm, I'm not sweating any of that. The stream is not secure. <laughs> There's a few things I'm sweating. Number one, um <laughs> if we don't do it live, then we lose the audience engagement. If we do do it live, then it becomes a matter of like Guapo can't play because he has to switch. Oh. Which you know, yeah, whatever. You know, whatever. Can we do? I mean, uh, Guapo could play, and I'll switch. Yeah. I'm fine with that. We could have I, that Nick. actually might not be that bad because I could like kind of host the pod while you guys are playing. Well, we need you in there. No, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you should definitely. Free money. You should definitely yeah, be come on. Yeah, we need that free money, bro. We could have just like a. <laughs> the fuck. We could have an empty there. seat for the chat to play, and Ooh. I can oh, control. That would be fun. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. Now we're getting really like, you know, complicated. Yeah, yeah I'm, quite honestly, I, I'm kind of scared of the chat. So I don't want them playing any hands in our game. How <laughs> could you, know? you, of all people, I'm, I'm be afraid of anybody I, playing I'm your stack? I'm fearful of the, the chat, you know? Mm -hmm. So they scare me. I think uh, <laughs> I'm going to talk to the guys at Blasio, but I think at some point this year, I'm going to put somebody in the 2550 game. Wow. How good's the game? Not great. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't expect to win Wait, off so of whoever why? I put in there. Uh, to give somebody a shot to play twenty five fifty. Okay, that's fun. Right? Like it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I I nominate Guapa. No, not someone in this room. <laughs> <laughs> like I someone in the chat. Myself. You know, I just give him give him a flag and tell him to fucking go nuts. A flag? You're in, yeah. Efro. You gotta give him two. No. <laughs> yeah. Get one boy. Minimum buy is three K. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> really? Is that small? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Give him a, you wanna play it? I can get you in. Yeah. I want to play. There's a game tomorrow. I turned it down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. They would, ha they would love you. I, oh, of course man. they would. Anyone Cig would love to have me in their game. I'm so Cigar fun. John. I'm he, so nice and oh, I'm so man. fun. Cigar John's the best. He would, he would say some inappropriate Sorry. things, but he's like 87. <laughs> so like, how much could you hold against Something him? Something I have never heard before. <laughs> it's not even, the thing is with him, it's not even intentional. It's just like, <laughs> it's just, he hasn't caught up to modern language. Uh -huh. <laughs> you it's know? just old guy shit. Um, that's the guy that played on Bally's with you at Trop? No, 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 no. Didn't you play, play on Trop? No, who played on Trop? Come on, it was him. It was Cigar no, John. No, no, definitely not. No. 100% not. Fuck. Uh, that was a good game, though. I don't remember which... I don't remember ever playing a good game. On, what do you mean? I, uh, the one you played at Bally's. Tropicana. And Bally. In Commerce or Tropicana? Here. Commerce. No. The one in Commerce was amazing. It was, it was an amazing game, but I'm talking about the one that was here. I'm pretty sure he played. Except the guys I can quitting. promise you that he did not. I don't know what you're talking about, but I, I will bet you whatever negative money you have. That he it's was like, how does he think that he knows more than you who actually played in the game? Well, can I get down on some money here? Yeah. I really hope I'm right right now because I get this is going to be great. Hold I, on. It's, Listen, it's, that's hope is all that you have. It's literally impossible. <laughs> like, for all you know, I just made a name up. Yeah, like it doesn't cigar even job. have to be anybody. He's like, oh well, yeah, I know cigar. Job. No, the I'm pretty sure it was the opening stream for Bailey's at the Trop. Somebody named Cigar John was in the game. Absolutely right. not. Well. All right, it's just, <laughs> just, it's just absolutely not. Berkey, did Kilbane make the cooking segment? He did not. Wait, no. but so I thought he quit commentary and he's been commentating. So what's going uh, on? You, you you can take the man off the streets, like a, but you can't take the streets out of the like man. It's like when your friend is like, oh, we broke up, and then you see them back together the next day. Melissa, yeah. he's a poker player. He did a poker player retirement. It's no different when you're a commentator. At, at his core, he's, he's a still commentator. just a poker player slash commentator, yeah. and they just dragged his ass right back in the booth. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, I'm just going to play the 25K. Yeah. And then they're like, like why don't you get here? in the booth? Yeah. 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 It took him exactly one event. He's like, oh, He made this whole mate. thing. Oh, mate, I'm stepping down, pursuing other ventures. <laughs> and then he's just back in the booth. The booth so it's brethren. Like, right, well. Henry Kilbane, mm -hmm. ace queen, 90K. Kilbane got himself in a little spot. Suited here. 
he got out of this oh, spot, which is remarkable. Weird. This is near the bubble of the 25k that he played. And this is a little bit I hate him. I fucking hate him. <laughs> Why? Sven. Why did he wear the scarf? This motherfucker has never worn a scarf and sunglasses before in his life. Yeah, we played a 25k Triton event. Give him, cut him some slack. Look at Steve. Look at fucking. That's what I would look like if I ever was in one of those events. I'd have the mask on too. He's totally spending. Look at O'Dwyer. He looks like he's on a fucking. Of bohemian play. vacation. Yeah, he looks like someone's dad in like <laughs> own Hawaii in Disney, <laughs> Disney Cruise Line. <laughs> oh my god, the posture, the scarf, the sunglasses, the golf. It's relevant potentially. What golf? How can you see the golf? I, saw, I still saw the golf. <laughs> he needs more scarf. Also, it's like a Triton scarf. It's not just any scarf. But him and Lewis love the Triton scarf. This is a tremendous amount of kit for Honestly, his neighbor to the right, that's how you wear a scarf. He pulls it off. He looks classy as shit. But he just has it around his... Yeah, look. It looks like a tie. He's wearing a turtleneck. Very good posture. No, he's not. That's just a scarf. No, it's not. <laughs> Pretty sure. How does he fold this hand? No, but it's, it's exploitable. I mean, just how? Get away. Bravo, Henry. Henry That's just goes, nice. Steve Dwyer has no bluffs in this spot. <laughs> 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 Fuck that guy. I'm out. <laughs> this, guy's, this guy's on vacation on the Disney cruise. Like, we ever, were debating on whether dad. or not it was more likely or less likely that he was bluffing when Henry has the ace of clubs there. Uh, I mean, obvious, obviously less. Yeah. Always less, but... Uh, you still have a pretty good hand to call with. Yeah. Great hand. You're pretty pretty happy to call. But, you know, more power to him. He ended up cashing that event, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cook Henry Cook. So they gave him like 25K for his min cash, kicked him the fuck out and said, Get back How in the booth. Why don't you get in the booth? Get, the get booth. back yeah. in the booth. It doesn't sound like your hourly was good enough. How about we give you another day rate? <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, mate? He's like, All right, mate. <laughs> I mean, he like full blown retired. He left yeah, the he, podcast group chat. I know. What was that? It was so. It was yeah. And you said, "What the hell are you talking?" It was about? like a he big was, like, send off. He, was, he just said, "Like it's he been great, looking, guys." He was See out looking ya. for Kate Middleton. And uh. then like, and then Conrad's like, "What the hell are you saying?" And then we just never circled back on it. He, uh. he like hit me yeah, up. He, he said, our chat. "He hit me up on the side." He's like, "Man, I, I it's been it's been great. I appreciate you. I'll he's see, not passing away. I'll see you sometime in the future." <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on. Like, it's like guys uh i've only got six months like it's no, like, no 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 it's the exact opposite like it it's just like it was it was his preempt preemptive i'm about to be so goddamn rich uh, that it's gonna be hard for me to talk to you peons any longer oh, okay He's and i was like you know what i fully understand me. every day i have to humble myself to continue these conversations <laughs> speaking of cooking i fucking cook today god damn it good broken oaken Man, broken, this guy. Broken, okay, we need oh, to have Oaken on the man. pod, and that's it. He was talking about today. He said he needs a day rate for it. <laughs> 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 I told him it might be worth it. Yeah. He was so told. I went to the bathroom, and he followed me out. And he goes, he goes, all right, come back ten thirty. I'm gonna go home and take a nap. <laughs> I go, I got a new puppy. He goes, bring her. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it sounds like heads up PLO 10:30 tonight. We play we play five five or six hours a day. You should not. You should be able to go like long stretches without a five bet pot, right? Like playing five or six hours live, you're talking like a hundred hands a day. Yeah. Yeah. You should go like weeks without seeing a five bet pot. We play on average one and a half five bet pots a day. <laughs> I played three today. <laughs> the fuck are you guys doing? I have Ace King every time. Hundred <laughs> percent of the times I five bet, I have Ace King. I play. I play two against Token alone. Both times he goes. I almost re raised you. <laughs> no, you fucking didn't. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, it wouldn't have worked. Second of all, I actually did have the bottom of my range both times. I had queens and ace king, and even still, it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> I'm ready to gamble. I'm like sitting 150k effective uh, with him. We're the only two idiots that are putting heaps of money on the table, and suddenly we're in like a five or six bet pot where I'm just thinking to myself, like I have queens. And I will put every goddamn dollar in front of me <laughs> in the middle if I have to, because <laughs> I'm just not relenting at this point. Yep. Uh, it worked out. We did okay today, kids. We did okay. You got him. Maybe a pickleball court suit. Wow. Or hyperbolic chamber. The the issue with the pickleball court is not money. Oh. It's I need help. Okay. I, I I need. Talk to us. Hmm. 
How do, how do I phrase? I need someone to make executive decisions for me that I'll be happy with in the future. I got you. Are you sure about that? <laughs> yeah, I watched, Remember. I'm on reels all the time looking at my dream house setup. Okay. Did you okay. hear the second part of that? Right. Statement? Remember, uh, I have to be happy with this <laughs> in the future. Yeah, but I think I have an idea of what you like. Look, I'll, I'll give you a list. It's not yeah, okay. It's not a lot. It's a, it. it's a pickleball, basketball, multi-court. Sure. Uh, I, I want the tiny house to be the Put gym. Put me in charge of the tiny house? Yeah. I got you. I was looking at it today, Did actually. Did you get for this? house? I, I've gotten so many renderings. I hate them all. And every one that, that, like, the more I hate it, the more expensive it is. I have a whole, <laughs> I have a whole folder on Instagram that's just saving, like. I've had you know. five different designers come out. And the, it, this is my problem, too, because when I say I need help, it's this is what happens. They give me a rendering, and they're like, okay, this is the, it's going to cost a fuckload rendering. <laughs> and I look at it and I go, this is terrible. <laughs> and they're like, what do you want to change? And I'm like, well, everything. Well, and then when I change things, you're communicating it wrong. If, if all of them are giving you the wrong thing, well, the, they're all giving me very different things. Uh, one decided to put in a putt putt course, which cool idea. Did you ask for that? Was so not what houses. I asked for. So many houses in Vegas have that. I'm like, I'm sorry, I would never use that. Yeah, no. I mean, Corey would love it, but <laughs> I, I'm not interested in Scout it at all. It. I was like, yeah, I was looking for more of a basketball pickleball court. They're like, yeah, yeah, but like, you know, but putt, hole in one, Okay, bro. but that's like, they're just not following instructions. Right. Well, you know, he was he was taking some liberties. Uh, yeah. He's and, got a little extra turf he wants to get uh, rid of. Yeah, another one. <laughs> another one, the rendering, I actually liked it. Uh, and in the middle of the, like, the, the main focal point of the yard was like going to be the middle. And it was separating the, the hardscape of the pool. Mm -hmm from the like landscape of the, the grassy area. And uh, he built out this beautiful fire pit with like bottle trees and you know string lights. I was like, yeah, that's yeah, exactly lovely. what I want. There's like this giant planter separating the two. I was like, that's amazing, perfect. And it was all like, um, like block. Yeah. I was like, I don't want it to be cement. Like you can just make that dirt. And he goes, oh, okay, okay, okay. Gives me a new rendering and it's cement. And I'm like, no, 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 like, you know, I don't need to spend 30000 for you yeah, to concrete top, this area. Take the fucking cement off. It could be dirt. Like, everything that you just designed here is screaming, you know, yeah. like, natural. That without the cement. Right. So he does it a third time, and it's, like, back to the block. And I was just like, I fucking give up. <laughs> I mean, like, I surrender. You, you win. Something weird's happening. Yeah. Well, the thing, the, w one of the weird things that's happening is everybody's too busy. Like, they don't need the business. Like, oh, because there's so many yeah, people everybody's, here. Yeah, everybody's just yeah. building and... You know, expanding. It's kind of crazy. Bitcoin. Bitcoin's up. Yep. That's what I need. I need to find somebody who takes Bitcoin. Huh. So, like, two Bitcoins, and you do everything I ask of you. Let's I go. I take Bitcoin. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't... I've never built a backyard, but, like... <laughs> I I think I could if mm -hmm. I like just watched a few tutorials. Right, right, I've right, done right. And, and I take Bitcoin. I watched a man <laughs> build an entire mud house and yeah. swimming pool. I've watched a I've bunch of those. These. I think I could do I have it seen with these. a fucking shovel. Yeah. I think I was in the middle of the like rainforest yeah. or something. Yeah. 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 You yeah. can fly him out here for like 3k it. and have him build everything. Maybe we should, yeah. Give him one ETH. Okay. And on top of it we get the fucking we can put it on YouTube like the video the, right. oh, the time lapse. And get all the money back. Yeah. Get, yeah. I'll get all the money. We'll be rich. Yeah. We'll be fucking 20 you, million views on the video. Do you want the two Bitcoin backyard or do you want the one ETH? Yeah. <laughs> well, for you for one ETH, like, I'll fuck around and find out. Them. I'll hire them for one ETH. The, so I do, uh, I'll, I'll end this tangent on this last little story. When I first built the house in 2018, um, our friend Jenna, who's been on the After Dark shows before, she, uh, she like flips homes and has a lot to do with real estate, stuff like that. She's like, I know the perfect guy. He built the Maloof's backyards. If you guys who don't know, the Maloof's are like incredibly wealthy. They they used to own like the palms and oh I know from uh from Real Housewives mm -hmm. yeah yep and I think that they I feel like they had something to do with <laughs> like, I'm gonna get this that's, guy that's Berkey's I'm gonna get I'm gonna hire a bunch of those guys and we're all gonna work together I feel like they had something to do with the UFC originally as well <laughs> um but neither here nor there all you need to know is that they're incredibly wealthy and okay. I immediately took pause and I was like Jeno I don't think I can afford the guy who designed that's the great. Maloof's backyard. <laughs> She goes, no, no, trust me. Like he's gonna do a great job. I was like, okay. So he gives me the renderings. Uh, Guapo, actually, if you look on our YouTube page under the private video, okay, uh, or maybe it's a private playlist, you might actually be able to find the original rendering. Okay. Uh, oh. If you find it, 
God bless. I actually just saw it the other day when I was in the sauna. But anyway. Yeah, I can work with this guy. Uh, so he, he sends me this rendering <laughs> in video form. Like full-blown design of what he wants to do with the backyard. He has this like kidney bean pool with the waterfall. Wait, pool. No, I know. Well, this is who built the pool. Oh, okay. So this beautiful design. Just incredible. And at the time, I didn't know anything about pickleball. But I was like, I want a basketball court. You know, all this stuff. Grass for the dogs. Mm -hmm. Everything. He's like, oh, yeah, I got you. You're going to love this. Sends me the rendering and I was just like, this is, this is something else. How much is it? Uh-huh. And Jenna goes, 170000 I go, no way. That's no way. Coin. I know. And I go, no fucking way. She goes, yeah, 170000 I go, build it. Fucking build it. So I take off for Aussie Millions. I go over to Australia. Jenna comes with Danielle and a bunch of friends. We're hanging over there for like a month, month and a half. Come back pool is half built like they're they're laying all the foundation and starting to pour the concrete and everything like that and she goes i need you know some cash to to pay for the pool and stuff like that I go, okay you got it start giving cash and i'm getting receipts and whatnot finally the pool and the hot tub are done and i've given the the 170 or so mm -hmm. and i'm looking around you know and there's a couple like sparse landscape like the grass there's a small grassy area for the dogs and then you know, what we have, the trees and whatnot. And I'm like, uh, all right, so when, when are they building the basketball court? When are they tearing this wall oh, down? No. Oh, no, you got scammed. When are they doing all this other stuff? And she goes, uh, she goes, I don't know, like, let's, let's set up a meeting. So we set up a meeting, and I go and talk to him, and I was like, yeah, so, like, you know, the pool's amazing. Can't wait to get in it. Like, when do we get the rest of the stuff? Oh, this is so awkward. He goes, he goes when you give me the rest of the payment, I go, <laughs> I was told, <laughs> I was told 170,000 oh and I've given you that. Well, how much more could it be? He goes, that rendering was 550,000. What? I go, sir, <laughs> excuse me. Jenna me. Scam. My Jenna. house was only 500,000. Jenna's a sick dude. I'm like, what the were fuck? Were you mad at her? I was so mad at her. Because that's livid. like a really expensive pool. It's yeah, of course. <laughs> this is that's what I thought I budgeted for the whole backyard. This is the most Jenna story I've ever heard in my so life. So typical Jenna. <laughs> so <laughs> fucking typical Jenna. Yeah, don't worry about it. 170. Yeah, no problem. So typical yeah, Jenna. 170 like, oh, is going to look great. He's a friend. Don't worry. He works oh for discount. Like, <laughs> Where does he... So is, do you ever get down to like where she got the 170 from? That's what I paid for the pool in the hot no, tub. No, no, no. I understand that, but do you do you understand why she thought it was 170? I don't understand anything <laughs> that, that that woman does. Uh, not not one goddamn thing. I mean, I'm just thinking about it now. I know favorite. she meant well. That's all I know, Conrad. She's my favorite. I mean, I've like like I've done um like concrete before. Mm -hmm. You know, I've I've I, I used to like concrete when I was a kid. So I think I could probably do. So, I could. Probably oh, that's do ironic I because I, I did a lot of backbreaking labor, and I don't think. I think I could at do, all. Okay, when I was eighteen, I went to the Dominican Republic and I repaired a baseball field. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> and I think I could use those skills and bring them with me into this new venture. Okay. Uh, what exactly and, and is and I'll, rebuilding a baseball 1. field? Five. Well, so we. That's a good question. We basically Waco. re. Uh, I don't know what the word is when you take the you it looks the like you're swinging an axe you right now. You the concrete and then you on. slap it on and then you smooth it out. I think uh, she just painted the Why was there concrete lines. on a baseball field? Yeah, on the walls. Did you did some mason it. work? The walls around it. Yeah, I did some mason work. I actually got overheated and I had to sit in the shade with an umbrella for a little bit. <laughs> so you made yeah, a I dugout? felt a little sick. Um, no, we it was all so you around. So you, you sat under an umbrella in the middle of the public bit. while I, everyone I felt, else built I felt it. a little sick for a little, but... <laughs> I got to say, <laughs> can someone bring me some more lemonade, please? I was like, I'm, I feel nauseous. It's hot. Concrete <laughs> walls <laughs> glass, <laughs> nice cool glass hot. of water while you guys finish that up. I mean, yeah, and then we were taking, I don't know, we were laying bricks and stuff. Oh, I Guapo, think I, I got it that. for you. All right. I'm trying to figure out And then I'm just thinking of the logistics of putting in the basketball hoop. I'm not sure how those go in, but I could watch a tutorial. I, I have to tell you, of everything that I want done, putting in the basketball hoop is for sure the least of okay. anyone's concerns. So maybe I'll outsource that. But otherwise, I mean, what else do we need to do? We got the spackle. I was looking today. Paint. I was looking today at where the uh, the the RV parking is. It's gonna be so good for the tiny house. 
for the yeah. gym. Like the door from the garage can literally just lead right into the tiny house if yeah, we want to. Yeah, I could build to. a door. Then you can you can <laughs> Look at oh, this. Wow. this. This was the original rendering. Oh wow. Yeah, I think I could do this. <laughs> this, this is the 170. This was I thought wow, this was I thought this so whole nice. thing was going to be 170,000. Oh my god, that's sick. You're so nice. Why don't you just show that to someone else and be like, "Hey, make this." This was a How half a million dollars. Yeah, but, but that show that would it only to be 100 the guys that make the Brian, I had my questions and concerns. I was assured. Wow, Why would you ever sick. be like, are you sure, Jen? And she's like, yes. And you're like, I got I got to talk to somebody else. She was That's the what general... I would say. I would be like, I, there's got to be somebody else that I wow. can talk to. She was the general contractor. Oh, it had a bridge. bridge. So Look big. at the bridge. <laughs> wow, the bridge. You thought you were going to get this for 170. Wait, they didn't even make the bridge. They didn't even do the pool. We had the pool fucking part. cut corners because I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I told Jenna that we're talking about her. She said, pick up someone your own size. <laughs> This, this, yeah, makes no. it look way this looks though. like the least impressive part of it, but wait till you see what's about to happen. Oh, jeez. I don't know if I could do. Boom! Oh, oh wow. my god! You couldn't even get wow. the fucking projector. That's cool. No, no, oh, we got boy. none of it. Oh, that I, looks I that looks way better the, in your backyard the right now. With my guys. They did an amazing <laughs> job on the pool and hot tub, though. For what it's worth. <laughs> she said, "Whatever, I could have done it for 150." Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let me talk to my. I'll talk to my guys. I don't have them yet. Fucking but I'll, scumbags. I'll find them. Jenna is literally what you you what you're saying right now. This is exactly what Jenna does. She's okay. like, I'll get it done. Yeah, but yeah, she'll, no she's problem. too expensive. I need some guys from like Ethiopia, and we're gonna like just work together. I want to know how much that kid makes. Like off, his, $3? off his off the YouTube nah, video, he's fucking balling. Right. Yeah, I bet that thing has like twenty million views. Yeah, he's balling in Ethiopia right now. He's not in Ethiopia. <laughs> it's clearly in a jungle area. <laughs> Well, I don't know what the terrain is in Ethiopia. Have you been? Yeah, you've been I, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were yeah. an expert travel guide in Ethiopia. Have you been to Ethiopia? <laughs> it's no, but it's in the African plains, is it not? There's know. jungle in Africa. Yeah, is, yeah I guess. Is. I guess there's some. There's all and types of terrain. He's definitely black, so he's Ethiopian. He's, he, yeah, <laughs> somewhere around. There. Okay. I think that we could like I can do it. I think Just, I'll do it for give you a discount. One point five Bitcoin. <laughs> And to Solana. It's going to cost more than that just for the materials. Not when he's no, doing it. I have, I have guys. That's I'm going to have guys. I don't have them yet. You I will. have shit. Oh, I will have guys. Do you think Homeboy is paying for more than, I don't know, a thousand bucks for materials to make something like that? Yeah, Bro, he's a... making everything out of mud in the middle of the fucking jungle. I need it in mud my backyard in the middle of the fucking desert. There's plenty of clay everywhere in Vegas. We'll find a lot of clay. We'll harvest it. <laughs> All we have oh, is good. baked concrete and solid ground with, mm -hmm. you know, some shallow graves from back in the day. Yeah, we'll get and some of those. And yeah, if same. you dig deep enough. <laughs> All right, let's It'll fucking... We got some poker to talk about. You guys think I should build Berkey's backyard? Just enough. Comment. Just absolutely. Honestly, you know what? I'm up for it. I want you to try. I think it'd be great. Okay. What a fun project. Okay, but payment is, is <laughs> restricted until the product is finished How to my about, liking. Okay. All right. I need a rendering, and I need it to rendering? resemble the rendering. What am I, oh my god! Picasso? Please make a rendering. <laughs> and make a rendering. Just I don't send know it to do. me, please. <laughs> all right, I'll make you a rendering. <laughs> this I'll draw is so it. Good. It's gonna be like notebook paper, I'm, looking I'm like stick school. figures. I'll make, I'll make you a blueprint on paper. Right. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. That's that's what I'm looking for. I want some serious. I, I need a serious professional here. I Alyssa. am. I am a serious professional. Wow. While, like, while, while we're like on I the subject, surgery. I'm gonna learn building. While we're on the subject, if anybody out there actually does build backyards, I'm looking. Yeah, just contact me and I got a lot we'll of airball money together. just waiting around. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I'm in the muck. Someone's in the muck. All right. We got another user submission. We got Jason Fish. Shout out to 11. Poker Dad. Yep. Asian Fish 11. Uh, he is playing a 510 game uh, and they are relatively deep here. So, uh, under the gun limps. Um, and he, so they're like 30, uh, 330 big blinds effective. Uh, he may, he, so it goes under the gun raises a 30. He has uh, Jack 10 of hearts on the button. He decides to three bet to 100. The small blind cold four bets. Uh, to 400, original opener folds, and Jason decides to call, and we get a flop of Jack of Clubs, Eight of Hearts, 
seven of diamonds for the top pair gut shot and backdoor. The small blind leads for 400, which is about half pot. Jason goes ahead and calls. The turn is pairs the board, eight of spades. And now it goes check, check. And the river comes the queen of diamonds. Small blind leads out uh, about third pot, which is 500. And Jason decides to jam all in for 2,500. And we don't get the result of the hand. Guessing he folded, but I'm not sure. But, um, you know, he was kind of like unsure, like if, if this should be a bluff. He said, uh, feels like, I uh, feel like he should just be checking range on river, betting just lets ace ace get shit on uh, because, because the board is really good for me. The mm -hmm. only real concern is queen queen. At this step, I'll have basically all suited connectors seven six through jack 10 plus seven seven through queen queen. I think he is in the muck. I would just. He oh. is in the muck. I think he has a really good wow. hand to call. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, let's work backwards. He has a really good hand to call. What hands should he bluff? What hands should he bluff? Something like ace-10? Ace-9 suited, if he has it? Which he probably doesn't. Yeah, yeah I don't think you want to have an ace. Maybe like king-10 then? King-10 suited? Yeah. Uh, well, you don't really... Maybe having an ace isn't that bad. You remove aces and ace-queen, which are the most probable call downs. Mm. Blocking ace king, obviously not great because that's what you're trying to fold. Mm -hmm. But also, ace king probably doesn't take this line. Yeah, it feels like it doesn't do this. Um, well, okay, uh, so I th I think let me let me we're we're already into the details when I ask what should his bluffs be, but let's uh, try to approach this from a, a bit more of a zoomed out perspective. Uh, we're talking about a four bet formation where ranges are still going to be a little bit linear. For, just because of how deep they are? Not just how deep, but the formation also. Oh, okay. well, uh, yeah, I guess buttoned. Well, it was button versus under the gun. So under the gun opened. Yeah, they're seven-handed. Okay. So they're yeah. seven-handed. So UTG seven versus button. I mean, right. yeah, like, look, it's not going to be a super linear spot. Like, small blinds shouldn't really be four betting too widely here. I don't think we should be seeing too much in the lines of nines, eights, sevens, sixes, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But... You know, you are going to have like a, a healthy mix of suited Broadway type hands. Uh, maybe like less so King Jack. You're probably not going to see any of that. You're not going to see the King Tens. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You'll see like probably a lot of like Ace King off being the bottom and then like some Ace Queen suited, some Ace Jack suited. Ace 10 feels like it's probably too <laughs> wide. Even Ace Jack. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Ace Jack, Ace Jack feels, little, feels weird. I gave him. I gave him. Feels borderline. Yeah, I gave him twenty five percent, but I feel like that's that's aggressive. I think that's okay. Twenty. Ace Jack suited. I mean. Yeah, uh, it, it's tough. Like I had to kind of paint these ranges because, um, I don't have three hundred big blind cold four bet ranges, so I just kind of have to intuit like what I think is reasonable here. He refers to him as the only good reg in the game. Yeah, so I think that gives him the ability to be a little bit more linear. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's suicide to show up with a hand like Queen Jack suited here. Yeah. I don't you know? Like that, uh, so I, I think it's like pretty reasonable to take those hands out largely. And then, sure, you're going to have pairs, but like you have to have some sort of limit to them, especially because you're probably going to want a cold four, a little bit of the fantastic <laughs> four at some frequency, mm -hmm. which means that you don't really need to have like eight, seven, sixes, fives, the hands that intertwine with uh, the Fantastic Four, if you will. Um, so before we get into, you know, what, what these ranges look like and everything else, uh, I, I think it's important to understand that, like, from the formation aspect of it, it's going to be, there, there's going to be a certain linear aspect to it just due to depth, right? Um, small blind has to have some coverage. It can't just be queens plus ace king. That's, that's obviously too tight and puts him in a bad spot. Mm -hmm. But it can be, like... Queens plus ace king, and then like some blocker hands as well as some hands that He's give you a little bit of board. Five. Yeah, so you want some wheels. Uh, you want to have like a little bit of the fantastic four, um, and then you know for the for the people that this know, is at a Fanta very low frequency. Fantastic four is yeah, uh, the like four that. five suited, the five six, the seven 
Six, six seven. Six seven. And, and seven eight. We, seven eight. Seven eight is the invisible woman. Six seven is the thing. <laughs> Uh, That's right. Four I five is Mr. Right. Fantastic. Four or five, Mr. Fantastic, and five six is flamethrower. Flamethrower. Okay. You always burn the money. That's I don't right. think it's flamethrower, but it's, it. it's something like I that. I call him a flamethrower. It's, like yeah, it's just a human, human torch. torch. A human yeah. torch. He's a go. flamethrower. Yeah. Okay, so now that we have the ranges here, <laughs> uh, going back to the actual spot itself, um, I, I think this becomes a little bit interesting because. Jason's implying that uh, by River, he has some sort of advantage here. And I don't see it. I don't see how he has nut advantage. I don't see how he's equity advantage. Yeah. Uh, I don't see an EV advantage here. Like, yes, he's going to have more 8X than the small blind, but not a ton more, right? Like, he has to be folding some hands to the cold four. Mm -hmm. So it's not like he can just, like, have all ace-8 suited, all 8-7 suited, all not, not You know what I mean? Like... First of all, these hands three bet at a low frequency to begin with. Then they probably don't always call, but um, you know if they do, like whatever, uh, it's not going to be enough of a concentration to his range where it's just like I have so many eights. You know, it's like nah, you kind of don't. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like yeah, you're going to have pocket sevens, but again, low frequency because you're not going to three bet under the gun that often with it, mm -hmm. uh, even if it's under the gun seven. You're going to have some nine ten, um, but same thing like. Small blind should have a little bit of nine ten also. We have to bear in mind like the frequency at which we're three betting the under the gun seven player. Um, with all of the hands that connect with this board are just less. The ranges kind of mirror each other, right? Like some like no. there's a little bit buttons definitely wider. Yes, of course. But like But in a bad way. It's wider seasons. like having Jack Ten suited maybe yeah. half the time instead of like ten percent that the small blind has it. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that. So I guess the point that I'm getting at here is uh, there isn't really a world where you jam river versus block and aces folds. Yeah. Like, jam river or so, even block. like, yeah, it's queen. Uh, yeah. Or yeah. So that, that's, I guess what gets to be a little bit confusing to me is like, what are we targeting here? Because it can't be Kings or aces. Right. Uh, and ace queen feels optimistic. Our hand also just seems too good to bluff. Right, we just beat Ace King. Yeah. Right. Um, even though I would make an argument that Ace King probably doesn't want to take this particular line. Does Ace Ace King probably doesn't bet flop and full. Um, Jack eight seven. Cold four bet pot on Jack eight seven. I mean, we That's get the bet. bet. I mean, yeah. we get the bet, but I don't think it doesn't full. We'll see. Uh, I would imagine. I would bet we have pretty close to a range yeah, bet here. Yeah, I think so. Um, but again, maybe not because I am painting ranges. So it's like I might just be painting wide enough where, awesome. where that's not the case. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm giving the, I'm giving everything like such low frequencies that, that maybe it will. I, I would estimate we probably so, have a range bet. When you say that, um, so you think Ace King would just not bet River? You're saying, but it's gonna. I don't think it would block River. Yeah. I don't think. A matter of fact, I don't think out of position will play blocks. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just think like once you once you get to the turn, I think it's going to be a two e strat. Mm -hmm. only. It's like your value is not going to want to play block. No, so. and your only bluff at this point should be ace king. Yeah. So I imagine, assuming two e is pot or less, I think we're just going to see a two e strat on, on turn. Turn. Yeah. Okay. So I could see a range bet for small on flop, followed by uh, two e and then all in okay. on river. I, I don't think block is going to get played. And for the reason, like, the block doesn't get pay played, I can understand why Jason's reaction is, like, fuck this guy. Because, like, maybe he assumes he's too wide. Maybe he, he's targeting, like, ace-jack, which is a very reasonable hand to target. But it's also like one in which hands. we block. Yeah, and he doesn't really have it pre all that often. I will say if um, ace-king does, um, if it is a full range bet, then it probably does barrel off, like you said, 2e. Turn river. Once the turn comes queen, yeah. I yeah. think we're just in there. Yeah. The yeah. River. Turn was eight. Turn was eight. Oh, River oh, oh. Yeah. River well, yeah, same thing. When bottom or middle pair pairs. Yeah. Middle going. pair, uh, maybe maybe not. Could be a little bit dicey. I don't know. In a four bet pot though. We're we're speculating, but we can take a look at the wizard Decade and see seven? see what's going oh. on here. Um. All can right. You can you share your screen map? Please? Oh yeah, my bad. Uh, let me see. I'm in on Zoom. Am I in on Zoom? Am I still in the meeting? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, it says you're here. Well, where the fuck am I, Guapo? <laughs> there I am. There he is. There he is. Share screen. Okay. We got it. All right, we you got, got me it. now? 
one moment you're in okay cool uh okay so we can see that this is basically a range bet um with the exception of like the little bit of nothing wants to play heavy check so the ace four the seven six those types of hands even the six five and five four the little bit that they're in there uh they kind of go what's that checking in the ace king um ace king off is checking a high frequency with ace of clubs uh, King of Hearts, Ace of Clubs, King of Diamonds. Only those. Oh, no, that's not true. It looks like it's uh, about half the combos of Ace King are are kind of playing passively. But yeah. honestly, like, uh, w what size did he choose in game, Lamana? For 400, uh, he bet half pot. Half pot, yeah. A little under half pot. He yeah. bet 400 and 835. Okay. So yeah, forty eight percent. I I assume the lower that we make this size, the more of a range bet we're gonna see. Yeah. So now we're up to ninety four and a half percent. Ace King is almost completely pure. Yeah. It's literally just Ace Four wants to shut down, and he might not even have Ace Four. Like I gave right. him these in half combos. The truth be told, like these aren't really good cold four bet hands. So I could probably even lessen these yeah. to like quarter, and even that might be aggressive. Like maybe fifteen percent is mm -hmm. reasonable. Um. <clears throat> you know, we might we might find scenarios where like he just never shows up with these types of things because you really don't have to. Even like a linear, uh, a more linear but like somewhat polarized range, you're just gonna use these kind of hands to round it out. You want to lean on pairs, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. You just like want to lean on pairs. So now you see like we're getting almost to a pure range bet, uh, as we kind of suspected. Now it's gonna be for two thirds pot. Let's reduce it down to what he actually bet, which is forty eight percent pot. Um, I imagine we're gonna get to like 98, 99 percent mm. somewhere in that neighborhood. Oh, f 100%. there it is. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Okay, so we've manufactured what is probably happening in real time. Uh, going for the pure range bet, we can see Jack Ten is gonna play pure call. We don't play any raise here, and reason being is exactly what I kind of speculated. We have no advantages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Just none whatsoever. <laughs> We are getting dusted on the overpair advantage. We're getting dusted on... Uh, the, the jack? Yeah. I mean, we have a jack X advantage for sure because we have king jack suited at a high frequency. We have ace jack suited close to pure. Maybe we do have it pure. Doesn't make up for the nut advantage. Right. No, that, yeah. yeah. We just don't have enough queens and kings and no aces, uh, which is a big problem. <clears throat> um, and then also, like, our jacks want to slow play. You know, like, so we want to have mm -hmm. some trap... We're not going to be at a big disadvantage here. Like I would estimate when we look at the uh, equity advantages, it's probably going to be like 52, 48 mm -hmm. in favor of out of position. Uh, oh no, it's actually it's much more, more significant. I was just saying it's going to be more than that. Uh, oh no, those are combos I'm looking at. Okay, so yeah, it's 55, 45. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so it is a bit more of a disparity than, than I realized, but uh, they don't have these backwards by chance, do they? Usually yeah. equity realization favors in position. Am I reading this wrong? No. No, I'm not because the straight advantage is in position. So that's correct. Okay, yeah. So uh, in position is at a pretty big disadvantage here. Uh, an 11% equity advantage is pretty significant. We can see that the EV disadvantage here is almost 3 to 1. That's that's substantial. So that's what's driving the, the no raising strategy. We just don't have enough good hands. Uh, turn was an 8 of diamonds. 8 of spades. 8 of spades. Brick. Badoogie 8. And we saw what size come through here? Check, check. Uh, oh, check, check, check. check. Okay. Yeah. So that seems relatively in line. Uh, not crazy. Ace King doing a lot of checking, specifically the suited variety. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with Ace Queen. Um, largely just giving up at this point. The little bit of Ace Jack that exists is protecting the range by checking. And then you can see top set of Jacks or full house now playing pure check as is the other little bit of jack x and straights. So the little bit of 10-9 that he possesses, pure check. The eight sevens for full houses, pure check. So his betting range is largely driven by protection, yeah. right? Um, aces and kings just get direct value from unblocking the jack. Uh, and then a hand like queens is going to need a little bit more protection than everything else. And we just fire off the ace-king off. Right, ace-king off and king-queen, these are going to be our bluffs. It. Right, and then you know the six five for the low end straight draw, the five four for the low end gut shot. These hands are worth nothing to us, so we just have to rocket them off. So we're gonna see a check check line here. Uh, well, actually, let's see what Jack Ten's supposed to do. So it actually wants to bet for protection's sake, and that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. to me. 
Um, so we should see like a smallish probe here. See quarter pot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not only protection, right? We're setting up for the river, correct? Like, because now, Somewhat. now we don't we don't have to we dictate the size or because we're not going to see a lot of leads if we if it goes check they check we bet river or we bet turn. Like they're not going to lead river, so we get to set up the like river buy, sizing. Like buying a river. Yeah, we kind of get. The, yeah, a little bit of that. Uh, a little bit of you're also to your point reducing SPR to where we can have jams. Yeah. Um, so we will want to play some jams when check two on the river, but that's basically what we're setting up is a river polarized strat where we either check back and just win our pot share or jam, but we're not going to play like B 45 on the river when mm -hmm. check two. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of weird because it feels like there's only like two cards in the deck that we're going to find jams on. Oh, uh, no, that's not true. Look, we have eight set. Oh, you're saying just specifically with Jack-10? Yes, with our hand. Sure. That hand's almost certainly never going all in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even on a River 9, I don't think it's going to play all in. Okay. Yeah, um, I'd just probably go half pot or something. Uh, I, mean 5%. I don't know. I don't know, but a 9 would obviously change things, I guess is my point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have he's, he's right that we do have some strong hands, right? Like, we have a full house in pocket, or 8-7, uh, pocket Jacks. Pocket eights for quads, pocket sevens. We have these hands at some frequency. Oh, I like this picture in picture. Nicely done, Guapo. Thanks. Good addition. Um, and then we have hands in need protection like straights with 10 9, pocket queens, pocket kings. Now, queens specifically, mostly betting to check down, right? Like not really looking to set up a 2E spot and just be all in. Um, I was maybe incorrect. Why do we not have the. Uh, let me let me switch this real quickly. I think I forgot to have an always at all in. Uh, I'm gonna run back through this really fast because I just want to know what E is here. Uh, I have a feeling that it's probably pretty close on turn, but I just wanna. I just want to say for our friend Jeno, she just sent me a state a receipt <laughs> that said first off she said you can kiss her black ass, <laughs> and then the receipt says 110. K, and with the 68k balance, so uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, 178,000. Yeah. Okay. Wait, so it, but you didn't pay it. No, it's paid. No, no, it got paid. Just oh. you know, she's this is she's saying that this is what she was told. You uh, want to know when I got that receipt? So you kiss her black ass. That's what she was told. <laughs> I got that fucking receipt the day that the pool was finished. I love Jenna. <laughs> to my surprise. <laughs> Uh, backyard. <laughs> very sick backyard um okay so strangely enough when oh no i guess nothing changed okay so still gonna play checker uh or biggish bet um we play blocks in position mainly because our range is actually like quite polar mm. and reopening the action here uh is is like pretty disincentivized so uh, we have a lot of hands that want to protect. We have a lot of hands that want to get thin value, like our Jack X, um, our Queens, sometimes our Pocket Kings. And then we have hands that like function as cheap bluffs where we could potentially fold out his Ace King. Uh, I imagine when we bet quarter, his Ace King is pretty mad. Yeah, you can see Ace King starts mixing folds. Ace King suited almost pure folds. Ace Queen suited is a pure fold. So basically that's the region of his range that we're targeting whenever we choose to reopen the action and everything else is just going to be resigned for river play so uh, our strongest hands like i mentioned will probably just play jam on river and then everything else will just like try to win its pot share so instead we go check check river is the queen of what diamonds queen of diamonds okay and yeah like i said we, we don't really put we don't see blocks here so it's two-thirds pot or it's all in um and you can see it's very specific to the hands that want to bet. Uh, pocket queens actually not ever really betting. And that's just mainly due to the fact that it doesn't exist all that often. I really like that line for the check check. Just bam. Yeah. It's, it's pretty dope. Especially with like, like I said, kings, aces, they just want to be all in, right? Mm -hmm. You're just targeting the jack, jack x, the check back, yeah. the turn or the river queen x. Um, and all of his strongest hands are incentivized to bet the turn. So when he says... We have 9, 10. We have pocket 8s. We have pocket 7s, 8, 7, all that other stuff. Well, maybe you do in practice, but like in theory, you shouldn't be checking those hands on the turn. Right. Yeah. Um, so you actually don't have them, which is why pocket queens wants to check because it needs you to start 
putting money in with something weaker. Mm -hmm. uh, you just don't really have calls as played. Whereas with like aces and kings, that frees up the queen X, that frees up the jack X that could potentially call uh, a river jam. And then they just balance that with the ace kings that have gotten there, a little bit of the ace queens. Uh, also the hands that would check jam turn. Correct. Like if facing a small bet. Yes. Yeah. I, I believe that's true. We can double check real fast. Um, they might just play call. Nope, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. They raise. They don't jam. Oh, okay. They raise 2e. Oh, okay. Um, they just don't, they don't want you to play perfectly, basically. Mm -hmm. They don't want a jack to become yeah. an easy fold. Right. decisions. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah, can't have that easy wow, fold that with was, jack that X. that would right. suck. What do you do with the jack then? Fold it? Die. <laughs> just mm -hmm. cry? Uh, I mean, it'll just... Start, literally start crying. In theory, it'll mix, but what you should do is just, like, call jack 10, fold the other ones, probably. Yeah. Um... Be, especially because like ace king is the bluff so you don't really want to have ace jack there having jack 10 is pretty nice you're drawing with tears in your eyes yeah uh so now if we change this instead to 67 percent and uh all in let's just change it to block and all in instead see what gets utilized in the block so it does get used some of the time but you can see the jam starts coming through a lot more frequent where before it was only like 19 percent, now it's 27 percent. so the blocks are going to come from a lot of the Jack X region. So a lot of what we are actually blocking uh, is where he's going to be pulling from. So a little bit of Ace Queen, but Ace Queen is more incentivized to go for it all. Uh, Ace Jack suited, which again, I don't even know how much of this he has, but given that he's a good player, he probably should have some. So like we kind of said in real time, this is the hand that we're targeting, but there's only going to be two combos of those at a fractional percentage of the time, right? Because he's not four betting it all the time kind of thing uh ace five ace four it's gonna go for the cheap bluff which makes a lot of sense to me um so when we jam over top of that we're just gonna have the best hand you can see tens gets in there ever so slightly if it has perfect suits of club diamond and then pocket jacks is like the main value hand that is really happy to induce uh so when this block comes through jack 10 is gonna be a call for sure it's just gonna be a pure call um oh it actually does mix bluffs what Wow. Which combo do you have? Hearts. Hearts. He, he wow. Hearts. found it. Wow. Look at this. Yeah. Nice work. Nice work, Jason. <laughs> so it does look like that it jams here at a low frequency. And I think that that's probably a byproduct of just not having many better <coughs> combos to choose from. The suits confuse me every time. Um, like, why is it hearts? Same. So I think it's probably hearts because you block queen x or queen jack of hearts specifically and the board blocks queen jack of diamonds and, and queen jack and, of clubs okay okay right so yeah, yeah. now uh you really only run into the spade variety right um where having the other two don't have any blocking properties so that makes a lot of sense to me uh you see a little bit of jamming with the ace jack suited for the same reasons i suppose but it's really really infrequent king's value jams queen's value jams obviously jack's value jam obviously uh, ten nine suited value jamming as well, and you can see nine eight suited. I presume this is value, yeah. Uh, based off of the hands that are blocking, um, and yeah, but blocking the streets. yeah yeah yeah. I imagine yeah. Okay, that makes a lot of sense to me. Nines, I guess, becomes the bluff. Uh, Jack ten suited becomes the bluff, and then if you have any of the Fantastic Four, mm -hmm. they become kind of nice bluffs as well. You block pocket sevens, although I don't think that's truly relevant in this formation. Um, and then the six five is just kind of like we got here with stone bottom and uh, we need to pull additional bluffs. The reason why we need to pull additional bluffs is because you can see that jack 10 has enough EV to call. It's mm. not indifferent between raising and folding, right? So it's not really a traditional bluff. It's, uh, it's kind of a bit of a reach for the need and for the fact that it blocks pocket jacks, which is one of the hands that induces. Uh, so really nice find, Jason. You you aren't really in the muck. Um, when you jam, his call-offs are probably just going to be over pairs or better if he has them. So yeah, you can see it's just a little bit of aces he played this way. Uh, pocket jacks. He's actually supposed to call it jack 10 and ace jack, but I imagine you're right that those hit the muck. And then if he ever has ace queen, it's supposed to be indifferent, but I would hope this hand pure calls. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mix with this hand. I would just like pure fold the jack X and mm -hmm. like pure call the queen. Yeah. Just seems like a pretty easy way to split. Um, in any event, very interesting. Uh, I, I 
was a little bit surprised at the way that construction came up on the river. But again, remember, we were we were initially correct in our analysis. Block doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Out of position range just wants to be greedy. So if he's making mistakes blocking, is it that he's transparent with his block, which allows us to jam profitably? Or is it that he only plays one size with block and now all of a sudden we get fucked? So uh, that, that would be one, so if you like took away the one final in? curious uh, yeah. experiment to run it. If he only plays block, yeah. now does Jack-10 jam? Probably I would suspect not. maybe no, not. Because he still has all those hands that want to jam. Yeah, pure call now. Yep. Yeah, pure yeah. call. And that makes a ton of sense to me because now you need way, way, way better blocking properties. Mm-hmm. Um in order to uh, actually find like some reasonable amount of fold equity. Uh, so like pocket nines really becomes the go-to bluff in this particular situation. A little bit of seven, six again, I don't think it's all that important. Yeah. And this is uh, the fun of it, right? Because you just, you don't, re- you can never know. You right. can never know if he has like the jam there or if he just pure blocks. So then like, you know, in right. real time, you're trying to figure out what, exactly to do and it's right it's not easy and you can see solvers and and you can see it changes the reaction too because now we shove differently or the construction of our shoving range changes which means now aces becomes indifferent because we have more combinations of aces Mm. and now as the imposition player they're not shoving quite as liberally uh in order to bluff and we you know we're very happy to shove an eight at this right. point for value so uh we have out, other out things position. we have other things to call with right, right. you can see yeah. that the jack actually starts calling way more than the queen mm-hmm. uh, and that's because we're not leaning on the jack to bluff anymore before remember the induction hand was pocket jacks from out of position but if they're also inducing with pocket queens and they're also inducing with over pairs and all these other hands well then blockers become a lot less important to us because their entire range of value is actually within that block size. So yeah, I mean, great read in real time to, to pick up on some weakness because you have to be pretty confident that he's uh, partitioning his range in such a way that the bluff will get through at an appropriate amount of time, mainly because you're laying a good price. I wonder if it got there. Oh yeah, I guess we don't know. We don't, we don't really, we don't We know. don't know, I just assumed it worked. <laughs> uh, there were some comments. Okay, well, you, you peruse uh, Discord yeah. while I tell the folks how they can submit their own in the muck hand. If you guys are interested in submitting it in the muck, hit hashtag Discord in the chat or head over to our uh, our Twitter page, at solve for ytv It's the pinned comment. You can't miss it. Join our Discord channel. We have an entire forum set up to in the muck. We would appreciate your comments. Also, if you're interested in having your own subscription to GTO Wizard, big shout out to them for sponsoring the in the muck segment. Uh, you can hit hashtag wizard in the chat, follow that uh, that link, and get yourself set up. Lastly, don't forget we have two academies coming up in May. May 23rd to the 25th is the Cash Academy. Get ready for the WSOP grind. Uh, May 27th to the 30th. 27, 28, 29. Yeah, that's correct. Four days. Uh, get you ready for the WSOP. Matt Hunt's going to be leading the MTT Academy. And finally, we are still running the Dealer Academy all through March. There are dates available here in Vegas, as well as special dates March 21st to the 23rd in Atlanta if you're on the East Coast. Be sure to head to solveforwide.io, sorry, academy.solveforwide.io if you guys have any interest in those, or hit hashtag academy, hashtag dealer in the chat. I think that's going to do it, guys. Yep. I know uh, every time Nikki gives us Reddit stuff to talk about, I find a way not to. <laughs> but we had a really, really important heartfelt convo about my backyard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Past my bedtime. I can't wait to build it. We had to get it out there. Uh, now the world knows Jeno fucked me. Yep. Uh, Fucking Jeno. You know, but hey, I got a gorgeous pool out of it. I would have never agreed to build that pool. It's expensive. Pool. <laughs> never, <laughs> never signed even off. Put the bridge in. Never. Uh, I mean, even to be though, fair, even though Ben Lamb paid for I it. I was just about to say. To be fair, <laughs> big shout out to Ben Lamb. Uh, my short deck winnings through him paid for that pool. Did you Should've realize that to date, it's been approximately like two thousand dollars every time somebody got in the pool. <laughs> it's probably accurate. Yeah, yeah, not ca- not counting the dogs. Yeah, not, yeah, counting, not, the not dogs. counting the pops. But probably yeah, like we did in the hot tub a lot though. Probably like twenty two hundred. A hot tub. Hot, hot tub, tub gets yourself. Hot Just tub the pool. 
Nah, it, we've had at least a dozen pool parties pool alone. Parties. I don't know what fucking there was dozen a lot of you're only talking fans about. Girls in There's that been pool. a lot parties. of OnlyFans girls in that pool. Think about <laughs> every OnlyFans girl that's been in the pool. That's right. Oh God. That's only right. fans with some only friends. That's right. People were getting their fingers wet in that pool. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> fucking around. <laughs> Crossing the line. I think that happens in every pool, honestly. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, that is going to do it for (laughs) us. We'll be back tomorrow at noon Pacific. It'll be the crew as usual. Landon will be joining us. Pip will be here with bells on. Say goodbye, Pip. Say goodbye. Bye. Later, squad. Peace.